How is it that some people can become so incredibly wealthy while the majority of people don't? It's not that they have some special superpower. It's not that they own some special skill. It's not that they're so much smarter than people. It's not that they work so much harder. It's that they believe that they can and then they use their time differently. We're all given 24 hours in a day. So the difference between somebody who becomes successful versus somebody who does not is now what input you put in those 24 hours. Mm -hmm. If you're spending your time on Netflix, if you're spending your time playing video games, if you're spending all of your time doing things that don't add any value financially to your life, well, if you compare that to somebody who's now working, who's now learning, who's investing in the education, you're going to see two completely different outputs. Now, this is where you don't want to get into the trap of just thinking, you know what, I'm just going to work really hard. I'm going to work 20 hours a day because, well, you can work really hard and still be broke. When it comes to the differences between the rich and the poor, it doesn't start with how much money you make. It doesn't start with what degree you have. It doesn't start with who your parents are. It doesn't come, start with what background you have. It starts with what mindset you have. And this is really the root of wealth. It's your mindset. And what that means is now, if you go about life and you say, the government's the reason why I'm broke. My greedy corporation is the reason why I'm stuck at a job that I hate. I can't change my life because of X, Y, and Z. You keep pointing your fingers as to why you can't succeed. Well, it's going to be impossible for you to succeed. Likewise, if you go around saying, I can't have that nice thing because I'm broke. I can't have the nice thing because I grew up in a bad environment. I can never become successful because of the way I look. I can never do it because of whatever. I can guarantee you are never going to become successful. But if we turn this around and you say, huh, how can I become successful? How can I make more money? How can I become wealthy? How can I get out of the situation that I'm in? Now your brain looks at problems completely differently because of now you're not complaining about the problem, but you're trying to find a solution to the problem. And that's the biggest difference between somebody who becomes wealthy and somebody who does not. It starts with the mindset because then once you change the mindset, you're going to start changing your actions. Now you're going to find out, oh, I don't need to spend money at Gucci. Oh, I don't need to go out and eat every single day. Oh, I can save money here. Oh, I can ask for a raise at my job. Oh, maybe I can start a side hustle. Oh, maybe I can start my own business. Oh, you mean I could actually potentially take my income from $40,000 a year to $400,000 a year? That's possible because when most people hear that, you think it's impossible. Somebody like me could never go from $40,000 to $400,000 a year. But until you believe it's possible, you're never going to put in the action to actually make it possible. How can you make your hard work the most rewarding? What can you do to make the hard work give you the biggest dividends and the highest returns? And this is where people say work smart. You know, some people say work smart, don't work hard. I think that's a bunch of crap. I think you need to work smart and work hard. They go hand in hand because that hard work is going to allow you to scale your smart work. But you now have to understand, okay, I want to become more financially successful. So now how do I do that? What is the financial education? What am I working for? When I make more money, what am I going to do with this money? Where am I going to invest it? How am I earning this money? What can I do in terms of taxes to protect my wealth? What can I do with my investments to scale them? What can I do to build an asset? What can I do to build a business? What can I do to scale the assets that I do own? So now you start asking these questions. And I know this is getting very deep in some of these topics, but it all starts with that mindset of believing that is possible for you. Because if you don't believe it's possible for you, you're right. But if you believe it's possible for you, you're also right. And whatever your belief is, is going to change what output you take. Mm. But what I learned later on is that I didn't actually build a business. I just built my own job. Because the way that that company worked was if I hosted a party, I would get paid. If I didn't host a party, I wouldn't get paid. So it relied 100% on me. Yeah, it was a good income but it was reliant 100% on me. That's not a business. And then you start to think differently. Well, a business means that now you can build something where you could potentially hire somebody to take your job. That's the business. Because now you as the business owner, you're not working 
for a salary. You're working for the profits. There's two different aspects to it. And not everybody has to go out and start a business, but everybody in America should be a business owner. Period. However, this does not mean that the majority of people should start a business, and this does not mean that the majority of people should operate a business because the majority of people don't have it in them or don't want to operate or start a business. So how do you do that? Well, you invest your money. Now, for me, I'm an entrepreneur, so I started my own company. But what I learned is there's two different types of income in that sense. There's the income you get from your labor. I go to work to get paid. I start a company and I work in the company and I get paid. The second is the equity side. I get paid for my profits because I own the company. If you can't start your own company, fine. You can invest in stocks. You can invest in real estate. You can invest in whatever. Now, when these investments that you own or you start make a profit, you get your share of that. And this is money you're making not because you're working at a company, not because you're working in this business or asset that you own, but because you own it. That's where the real wealth is built. Wealthy people spend their money to earn more money. Mm. Yeah, the majority like of everyone else spend their money to buy things, which mm. makes everybody else around them rich. But you hear a lot of people in the middle class talk about how Oh my God, my home is rising in value. Why is that? Well, no, your home is not an asset because you are just buying it for the purposes of hoping that it'll be more valuable when you sell it. But there's no guarantee. Now, can your home be an asset? Sure. If you bought your home today for $200,000 and you could sell it in 30 years for $300,000, is it an asset? Sure, after 30 years because you sold it for a profit. But until then, it's a money pit. You have to pay for the taxes every year. You have to pay for the upgrades every year. You have to pay for the renovations every year. You have to pay for the maintenance every year. Between now, the day you buy it and the day you sell it, it's a liability because it's just sucking money out of you. Does this mean you shouldn't own a home? No. It means understand what a home is. The way I look at home ownership, it's like me buying a shirt. I buy a shirt because I like the shirt, not because I think that I'm going to be able to sell the shirt for a profit. And the reality is the system benefits when you think the opposite. Because if you think your home is an investment, well, now what happens? Well, you're going to want to stretch yourself a little bit thinner to buy a bigger home. Mm -hmm. Because if your lender can lend you more money, well, might as well stretch it a little bit more because it's an investment, right? You can pass it down and build generational wealth through your home. That's the pitch. I used to be a real estate salesperson. Mm -hmm. I still am a licensed salesperson. I don't actively work as one, but I used to. And this is what we're all told, right? It's your home as an investment. It's the biggest investment you'll ever make. Well, if you are going all in on the home that you live in, and now you're sacrificing your ability to actually invest into assets that can pay you, this might be stocks. This might be rental properties. This might be a business idea. Well, now this home, which was supposed to be an asset, is sacrificing your ability to own real assets. So no, because of that, your home is not an asset. And your, your car is absolutely not an asset because cars are some of the most well-known depreciating liabilities. As soon as you put your keys in a new car and drive it off the lot, it's going to lose 15 to 20% oh, yeah. of its value. And it's going to continue dropping in value like a rock. Drive a car that you can afford, that you can pay for with cash. That way you don't have to pay interest on a depreciating liability. But we're told that it's an asset. In most P&L statements, in most bank statements, in most accounting statements, cars are written as assets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, that might be an accounting thing. But understand now for your finances, when you spend money, you want to prioritize buying real assets. A real asset is something that you're buying for the sole purpose of making money. You buy a home to live in, not for the sole purpose of making money, but for the sole purpose of making memories. If you can mm -hmm. afford it, great. But just understand its real place in your financial system. And when you think like that, well now, yeah, maybe you buy a little bit smaller, but now you have more money to actually invest into real assets, which will pay you, which means that Maybe in the near future, you'll be able to buy a much bigger home and not have to worry about the price because you built the assets first. And depends how you look at the system. In this conversation, it's almost like the real estate market is trying to sell you a more expensive house, right? Car companies are trying to sell you more expensive cars. 
And people are just left and right falling for that in, in a lot of cases, right? They can't, ex- can't afford an expensive car, new car that's going to fall in value right away, but they'll, they'll do it. What are some other ways that the system is keeping people poor? So the first thing is just understanding what that means. What is the system? And the reality is, look, the system is what it is. And we try to assign an emotion to the system. And I'm going to explain what that means in just a second. But in reality, you have to understand that this is just what the system is. Lenders are in the business of lending money, period. They make money when they lend money. So it is in their best interest to lend you more money. A salesperson is in the business of selling something. It's in their best interest to sell you something bigger, sell you something more because they're on commission. The more they sell, the more money they make, period. And so now when you understand this way of thinking, you're going to start changing the way you start looking at things. What is a corporation's best interest? A corporation's best interest isn't for you to keep your money in your pocket and invest your money and be financially smart. A corporation's best interest is to now get you to open up your wallet and buy their stuff because that's how they make money. Does that make them evil? Well, I'll let you decide. I think, look, you don't need to decide an emotion. It just is what it is because once you understand this, you're just going to look at the world very differently because when you understand the way the system works, now you can say, huh, okay, So a corporation's in the business of selling me something, a bank's in the business of lending me something, a salesperson's in the business of getting me to buy something bigger. What do you need? I need the financial education to know what I can buy. Because guess what? We all need things. And when you have money, you don't feel so bad about spending money because you know how to control it. Now I can go to a corporation and buy the things that I want, that I like, and have a great experience because I can. I can go out and know when I should borrow money. Maybe I use money, borrow money to buy other assets. You borrow money to buy rental properties. I borrow money to grow a business. Maybe I go to a salesperson and I have them sell my things for me. Now you start thinking about things very differently because you understand the way the system works. But the problem is, that we're never taught this. We're never given any sort of financial education. So what ends up happening for the majority of people is you end up just being a pawn in the system. You just continue fueling the system because guess what? Corporations are going to get you to spend. They hire the best marketers in the world to get you to spend more money. You're going to continue borrowing money because guess what? Banks are in the business of getting you to borrow money. And they hire some of the smartest people in the world to get you to borrow more money, to create programs to entice you to borrow more money. Salespeople are the same way. They go through trainings after trainings to learn how to sell something. Again, this doesn't make them necessarily evil. This is just the way the system works. The system is fueled by spending. What we don't have, the problem is we don't have the education to then tell us when we should spend and when we shouldn't spend. And this is where I come and this is where I talk about the financial education of just understanding this is what it is. It's like gravity. It's happening around us. Do you want to fight gravity or understand gravity? Because when you understand it, now you can take advantage of the system too. Because now when you understand this, well, you can own a piece of the system Hmm. as an investor. And now you can benefit from the way the system works. Because now if we take one step back from this and we go just a little bit more higher level, guess what? Our entire financial system is reliant on this. 